All right, I want to talk a little bit about bonding in metals. You might wonder, if you look at these typical metals, they have one electron each that's not part of the core electrons uh, as electron configuration. So how the heck, with so few electrons, can these bond and conduct electricity and things like what you expect? Well, one model is called the electron C model. Well, let's say we have some metals here, just designated by M, and those one electron that each one brings is just kind of sitting around it in a matrix. And those electrons are associated with a particular metal but not strongly bound to it, so they're free to move. And thus, because those are free to move in this what's called electron C model or electron C matrix, electrons can pass through a wire causing it to conduct. They can easily absor absorb photons and visible light. Um, they can re-radiate uh, light and be lustrous. Um, or a wire can be bent and curved around in different shapes and that wouldn't disrupt the bonding here or the conductivity. So that kind of explains a number of things. Another way to explain this is what's called band theory and this is from MO theory. Let's take the example of chromium and just for simplicity Let's just say it's 4s2, 3d1, 3d4 um, for now, okay? Instead of saying 4s1 or 3d5, uh, we'll just use this. So if we draw our energy diagram, we've got a 3, uh, the 4s level down here, and the 3d level up here. And that d orbital, there's five d orbitals, so there's five lines here. And so let's fill this in, 4s2, 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4. Just drawing in the four electrons there. Now notice what happens, this is for one chromium right here, one chromium atom. Now let's draw two chromium atoms, we're going to make kind of a metallic structure here. And now we've got two 4s orbitals, because there's two chromiums. And we've got, I think that's about 10. Uh, d orbitals. And now, let's draw a chromium metal, we just say n atoms. Well, then there's a bunch of these and a whole bunch of the d orbitals here, and we start to call, because, and the reason they're not exactly the same energy, each atom is not particularly the exact same energy, so there might be a slight deviation. And then with all these slight deviations here, depending on where the atom is, its environment, etc., can form what we call a band. So you might draw like this, a box, to represent this whole band. And here's the 4s band and the 3d band. Okay? And these are energy bands. Now note, there is here a band gap, or a space between the bands. Now electrons here are free to move wherever at once within the band, here and here, but to go up to the next it must jump up the band gap. So there must be enough energy to allow that band gap jump to happen. This helps us explain things called semiconductors because not as much as metals, but in semi-metals this band gap is big enough where sometimes it'll jump that gap and sometimes it won't. Um, and so uh, if you have something like silicon, uh, there's going to be a band gap and it's partially conductive. The electrons will move in the lower band and the upper band, but sometimes jump across. And so there can be what's called doping by, say, boron that has one less electron than silicon, or phosphorus that has one more electron, so three, four, and five. Um, by what's called doping, by putting boron in, and boron will cause an electron to go up, or, and boron's a p-type donor, or something like phosphorus, which is called an n-type donor, which will add another. So boron will leave a hole where phosphorus will uh, add electron, and those energy levels will sometimes be here in the middle of the gap, causing the band gap to decrease and change the conductivity of, of that given metal or semi-metal. 